station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston station, ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Station has you loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. Hello and good morning from Pensacola, Florida. We are Creative Learning Academy, home of the next generation of artists, engineers, historians, politicians, and space travelers. Hello, thank you so much for being here with us today. Astronauts like you help inspire us and give us a lot of courage. We've been really excited about this time we get to spend together today. Students at Creative Learning Academy are fascinated by your experiences. Thank you for your willingness to share your time with us. Here's our first question. Hello, my name is Ashlyn Puig. My question is, how do you get power without power lines or generators? Good morning, ohayou gozaimasu. Uh, students of Creative Learning Academy, welcome to the International Space Station. Uh, Ashwin, actually, we use uh, solar arrays on the outside of Space Station. Uh, so they take the sun's energy, so solar energy, and then we convert it into electricity that's distributed all throughout the station, and, and that's what we use. So much like when you see solar, solar panels back, uh, back home, except uh, we don't usually have clouds covering it, so it works really well up here. Hello, my name is Lorelai, and my question is, what do you study on the International Space Station, and how do you do it? Lorelei, that's a great question. You're actually in the laboratory right now of the International Space Station. Um, we study so many things up here. We study our home planet Earth. We have several uh, experiments mounted on the outside of the ISS uh, that look at changes over time on the Earth, the carbon dioxide levels, the uh, the changes in our vegetation back home, uh, just taking historical images and seeing how the Earth changes over time. Uh, we study outer space as well. We have the alpha magnetic spectrometer and other things that look out into dark matter. We study our human bodies. Um, so we're all subjects, all the astronauts on board are subjects up here. And that helps us figure out not only how to go further in space and for longer duration missions, for example, uh, to go to Mars someday, but also it helps us back, back home on Earth with uh, understanding the aging process and different medicines that can be useful. Um, we study different materials and composites because up here, uh, you don't have gravity, so you can get a more perfect mixture. Uh, and so we study so many various things up here. Hello, my name is Matthew. And my question is, what exercises do you do on the International Space Station? Matthew, as an athlete, I appreciate that question. We actually are, we work out two and a half hours every single day up here. Because normally when we're just hanging out throughout the day, you know, we just float so we're not using our muscles like we normally would be walking around on Earth. So we do a combination of resistive exercises and cardio exercises. For the resistance training, you know, like lifting the heavy weights, uh, we've got a device we call ARED, and it uses vacuum cylinders uh, to, to, to help create uh, the force that we need to pull against. Uh, then for cardio, we have two devices. We have what we call T2, which is a treadmill. So we wear a harness that then pulls us down and we can increase or decrease that load. And the other is uh, right in front of me, actually, it's called Sevis. it's a bicycle. And that's actually pretty hard because on earth, I tend to cheat and use my body weight to push the pedals down. But uh, up here, uh, that doesn't help at all.
Hi, my name is Max, and my question is, what was it like transitioning from a pilot to an astronaut, and will you still fly when you return? Max, it actually felt very seamless to me. A lot of the same things I learned as a pilot carried over to being an astronaut, especially having, um, you know, I joined NASA at a time where we had so many new vehicles. The SpaceX Crew Dragon that I actually flew up here, Starliner's Boeing vehicle that's going to be flying crew up here soon, the Orion capsule that will uh, take our astronauts to lunar orbit, the human landing system that will land the next humans on the surface of the moon. So the things I learned as a pilot carried over to evaluating those, but I also had to learn a lot of new skills as well because up here, you know, if the toilet breaks, we have to fix it. If someone's sick, you have to take care of them. So you have to be a bit of jack of all trades up here. Hi, my name is Camila. My question is, are there any kinds of medicines or vitamins you have to take to live in space? Camilla, that's something we actually uh, study quite a bit. I actually log every single thing I eat throughout the day, every medicine I take, so that we can understand better what we need to do in the future, especially when we send astronauts out for two and a half, three year long missions to keep them healthy. Um, we do miss some natural things, like it's a lot harder to have fresh food up here. We actually just got a new resupply, so we had, you know, had some oranges and apples the other day, but. Um, you know, we don't get that as naturally. Sunlight, we don't get as naturally. So often we do supplement uh, with vitamins as well. My name is Gia, and I, my question is, are you guys ever worried if the asteroid's gonna hit you? Gia, I actually have found that Strangely, when you get up here and you start getting used to working in this environment, uh, I sometimes just think of it uh, as my home and I, I actually forget that behind these pretty thin walls are the vacuum of space. Something we do have to be concerned about though is micrometeoroid debris. And so that is actually tracked by people back home on the ground and every now and then if, uh, if they see that a piece of debris might be coming towards station, uh, we'll actually do a reboost and uh, raise our orbit or lower it to avoid that debris. So that's a great question. Hi, I'm Howard. How do you ask when that trick in space? Harris, a uh, valid question because eating and food is very important. We don't necessarily cook per se in space. Um, we do have a food warmer, so most of our meals are already uh, cooked on the ground for us. Some of them are then dehydrated and sent up. So, you know, all we have to do is really add some water and put it in the food warmer. We also do have a fridge up here if you want, you know, maybe a cold drink or something, you can take your water and put it in the fridge for a little bit. Um, but we're not necessarily cooking on a stove or oven. We do every now and then have pizza nights and make some pizza though. Hello, my name is Nathan. And my question is, what are some of the hardest things about fixing and maintaining the International Space Station? Nathan, um, we have to do maintenance up here on a regular basis. I actually really enjoy, uh, really enjoy doing the maintenance, but probably one of the hardest types of maintenance is when we have to do maintenance on the outside of the space station, because then it's a whole process of preparation to go on a spacewalk. We have to get in our spacesuits and go outside, and you know that brings its own risk to it. So. Those tend to be the most diffi difficult maintenance activities. Luckily, we have a robotic arm that often can take care of stuff, but when it can't, uh, we have to go outside and fix it ourselves. Hi, I'm Haley Press. Does astronauts wear shoes? Haley, let, uh, let me float up here a bit so you can see. Uh, I am not wearing shoes. I am just wearing socks. We like to do that because, you know, right now I'm using this with my feet, but if I turn upside down, now where I might have put my hand, 
is where my foot is. So we don't really like to wear our shoes very often. However, we do wear them when we're working out um, on the exercise bike and on the treadmill. I do wear shoes, but otherwise I just go around in my socks. Hello, my name is Stella, and my question is, what is your job in outer space? All right, Stella, well, I'm a scientist, uh, I'm a mechanic, I'm a robotic arm operator, I have to be a chief medical officer, so we have a lot of jobs in space. So if you think about it, right now there are seven of us on board, and we have to be able to take care of anything. Um, you know, our main mission is to perform science and conduct experiments on the space station, but if something breaks, we have to fix it. If someone's not feeling well, we have to take care of them. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I have to be a bit of a jack of all trades up here. Hello, my name is Luca, and my question is, how do you clean up in space? Do you have dirty laundry? Luca, um, yeah, so our, let's talk about showers, for example. Showers look a little different up here than they do back home. That's actually one of the things I miss most is having running water come over my body. Up here, what I do is I, I take uh, my water, my drinking water, and I actually just use the straw to create a line of water throughout my body. And then I take some soap and I rub that in and then I dry it off with a towel and then maybe do another line of water to wash. We don't have a laundry machine up here either, so we don't actually um, wash our clothes. We wear them for a certain period of time, and then we, uh, we throw them out. So, for example, these pants uh, I wear for a month, and then I throw them out. Hi, I'm Magnolia Orson. How do you go outside the space station? Magnolia. So actually, I just went outside the space station for the first time with my uh, good friend and crewmate, Laurel, uh, about two weeks ago. It's actually a very long process. So we have to get in our spacesuits, and for that, we have to make sure we pack all the things we'll need outside. The ground team is writing a bunch of procedures. Uh, if you're using the robotic arm, you can put uh, an astronaut on the end of the robotic arm, so then someone needs to be on board and ready to maneuver um, the arm around with someone on it. And so it's actually uh, quite a difficult process. And then we go outside, and usually we go out for around six or seven hours. That's how long we have you know, oxygen and can remove the carbon dioxide from our suits and have water for cooling and things like that. Hello, my name is Zadie, and my question is, is your daily routine on the International Space Station in any way like your daily Earth routine? Zadie, so my daily routine is similar in terms of what I do, but it looks a bit different. So just to talk you through it, when I wake up in the morning here, uh, I'll put a circle of water on my face and wash that off with a towel. Um, I'll take my daily vitamins, as we talked about earlier, and then I'll make some breakfast and have that. And then really, usually from about 7.30 in the morning to 7.30 in the evening, we're working and doing our exercise during that time. We have a meeting in the morning and a meeting in the evening. And then after that, we get to relax a little bit. We usually hang out for a bit and have dinner together uh, just behind me in node one. And then I'll start winding down and preparing for the next day and get some sleep. Hi, my name is Ain Chong, and my question is, what do the stars look like from the space station? Aiden, um, I just actually yesterday went uh, to the cupola windows. Cupola is our, we call it our window to earth. It's an earth facing series of seven windows. And I felt like I could see the entire galaxy. Um, the stars um, are s similar to earth in that they're, you know, pinpoints of light, but they don't sparkle in the way they do on Earth, I think, because we don't have that atmosphere between us. So they're just very solid uh, spots of light. But if you turn off the lights inside, you can see so many of them. 
Hi, my name is Curtis, and my question is, what inspired you to be an astronaut? Curtis, uh, I see you're in fourth grade. I was just a little bit older than you when I decided I wanted to be an astronaut. I was in sixth grade, and it started when I did a book report on Valentina Tereshkova, uh, the first female in space, a cosmonaut. And uh, I think I decided it was just something exciting. I really liked uh, math and science. I liked the idea of exploring. Uh, and so I decided I wanted to become an astronaut. And as I got older, I looked into it more and more and uh, followed the space missions that were going on and throughout the shuttle era. Uh, and it just was something that grew as I got older. Hello, my name is Sierra. My question is, how long does it take to get in your spacesuit? Sierra, the actual physical part of getting in your spacesuit, we put the, you know, the pants on first, you could say, and then the, we slide into the top. That's not necessarily a, a very long process, but in doing that and doing all the checks to make sure everything is secure and locked on and that we don't have any leaks and we have to do a pre-breathe beforehand because we're going down to, to vacuum. And so in that process, it's actually quite long. So when we did a spacewalk the other day, I think I woke up around 5, 5, 530 in the morning. And I don't think we actually got outside the door just to start our spacewalk until around 1230. So, so it was a little over six hours. Hello, my name is Lute, and my question is, does the blood rush to your head when you go upside down in space like on Earth? All right, Luke, let's see. Does my face look more red? Um, probably not. So, no, up here, it doesn't matter which orientation I'm in. It all feels uh, the same, basically, as far as my body's concerned. However, I will say when we come from Earth in 1G and get up here, there are a lot of fluid shifts and you've probably seen some astronauts have pretty puffy faces up here because not as much is uh, down at their legs and it's more in the upper body. So we do experience that going from Earth to space, um, but not necessarily as we move in different orientations on the space station, it's all the same. Hello, my name is Zane and my question is, um, what are some of your favorite experiences at the International Space Station? Zane, some of my uh, most special moments have been just looking out the window and looking back at Earth. Um, I can't possibly tell you how beautiful our home planet is. And, and every time, even though we often pass over uh, the same regions every few days, uh, every time it looks slightly different based on the clouds or the sun angle or um, other different things. And so uh, looking back at the Earth is probably my favorite thing. And then also hanging out with my crewmates. My name is Karina Mariano, and this is Olivia Bahar Noah. We want to thank you on the behalf of the Student TI Creative Learning Academy. You're an inspiration to each of us. Merci que ma vacht gozarandin. Thank you for spending your time with us. This has been an incredible experience for all of our students, faculty members, and guests. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to have spoken with you. I hope you enjoyed your time on the International Space Station. Have a good one. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.